He comes back in. He's like, we got to get out of here, dude. There's a dude <laughs> trying to break in. The relief after you complete a Dragon Drive, even in D class, which I know isn't the coolest class, but just the relief of finishing that is something I have not felt before. Like, I just don't think there's any way we don't do one again. It literally is the first picture I took at Sick Week. Hey, guys, it's Mike at Drag Drive Repeat, sitting here with my co-host, Mr. Eric White, tonight. Y'all, we've got a great episode for you. This is cut down from an, a live stream that we did the other day, but guys, we had to bring you this video as a standalone with Mr. Nick Leonard of Race, Rebuild, Repeat. Eric, what was some of the fun stuff that he talked about that you liked? Yeah, he talks about the vehicle that he took on his first Dragon Drive, uh, the Cyclone that he owns. He also owns a Typhoon as well, so that's pretty cool. Uh, tells a funny story about the vehicle that they were going to take the sick week and what happened and why they didn't end up taking that. Yeah, Did we even talk about his first car? Like what, yep. what was his first car, what he modified, and how he just exploded that whole bit of upgrades. We'll let the people find out about that here all right, guys, uh, listen, here's the deal. Gentlemen's agreement. We love what we do. We love bringing this kind of stuff to you, but guys, it takes a ton of time and a lot of money to do this. So the gentleman's agreement is we'll continue to do this, but guys, we ask that you hit that subscribe or follow button wherever you're watching this uh, now or in the future. So just do that for us. We want to say thank you for all the support that you've given us so far. And uh, guys, we can't do it without a race car friends, man. I know I've, I've, I say it a lot, but listen, you guys truly do make it, make the biggest difference for all of us. Eric, why don't you run down through our sponsors and then we'll bring on Nick. Yep. Thank you. Summit racing driven racing oil, Molly motorsports, car chains, 3d Howard's cam performa built transmissions, sweet patina and racing junk. Mm, man, that's a big list, and it's uh, it's going to be growing. We've got some got some fun stuff that's working still, uh, even though we are getting late in the year already. I can't I can't believe it. So yeah, I mean, looking at that picture, there's definitely still room around the edges for more <laughs> sponsors. So you know, anybody out there listening that wants to jump in, we got room for you. That's exactly right. <laughs> All right, well, let's bring on Nick now. Let me kind of give you guys a little bit of backstory. Um, I had no idea who this dude is. I'm standing in line at one of the route stops on Sick Week, and I've got the big camera. Him and Frankie are standing two down. He's got a big camera. We're instant buddies. He didn't know <laughs> yet, but uh, I was going to end up uh, sitting at the table with them and learned a lot in the 12 minutes that we sat there waiting on pizzas. But, uh, Mr. Nick, introduce yourself. Tell everybody who you are and, uh, and, and what you got going on, dude. Okay, yeah, name's Nick Leonard. And before we get to that, I think it's worth mentioning, Mike, that you and I had the same exact pizza order. <laughs> A pepperoni and a meat stuffed. I don't know how yes. that happened. Yeah, it uh, it worked out well. And then when mine came, he was like, uh, I think I think that's ours. And I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, that was so crazy. But yeah, yeah Nick Leonard, uh, formerly a side-by-side -side blog, does a channel I started back in 2015 uh, at the end of 2023, no longer with those guys, and now doing Race Rebuild Repeat with uh, Frankie J, who I'm pretty sure is in the comment section as No Limit. <laughs> That's the name nice. of his YouTube channel. Nice. Awesome. Well, you guys were a blast to hang out with. And and again, like met on sick week. This is your first dragon drive. Yep. Dude, let's let's start way back. I gotta know, was was eleven year old Nick? Was was he a car guy? Have you always been a car guy? Okay, so never told this to anyone. I wish I got these out of the garage. I should have thought about this. I uh I've been a car guy forever. Like I don't know. Um I don't remember the name of the website, but there used to be a website that listed like the performance specs of every car ever mm. right like you could look up whatever you wanted and i started idolizing these cars that were really quick right like uh mm -hmm. at the time like the fastest zero to 60 was like mclaren f1 and you know like all these crazy weird uh like porsche le mans 962 dower edition or something <laughs> and i had wrote all these names of these cars on notebooks that i had for school when like back when i was spelling things like horribly wrong so probably like third or fourth grade and uh yeah, i've been a car guy forever like one That's of my awesome. er one of my earliest car memories is watching a, a friend of my dad's his name was cammy he had a 66 like baby blue gto he would come over and then when he left he would do a burnout and i would like run out to the road to touch the hot asphalt and be like oh my god this is the best thing ever so How from cool. that point it was like car guy for life That's so awesome. it, is does that dude still have cool cars 
Cammy's probably dead, brother. <laughs> yeah, he had white hair when I was like four years old, so that was oh yeah, thirty some years ago. Cammy's probably gone. I, I lost Cammie, contact thanks, with that bro. guy. Yeah, but he did inspire me, and I'm sure a lot of other kids my age too, just doing what he liked, doing burnouts. You know. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Uh, what was your first car? So first car ever. So the first car I ever purchased, I worked at Taco Bell, and uh, my dad agreed to co-sign on a loan for a 96 S series blazer. So four oh, by man. four, four door. And it was on eBay, which is super weird. So this is probably like 2004, 2003 ish. And it actually had like a really crappy supercharger on it. <laughs> it was, uh, the brand was called power dine. It was mm. just like, maybe you've heard of it, maybe not, but, uh, it wasn't gear to gear internally. It had like a belt in it internally. Oh, and, geez. uh, it was like a like a not nice supercharger, but a centrifugal supercharger. And it was pretty cool, and it was tuned by some local shop. And it was slow, slow as hell, but I loved <laughs> it, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. That's awesome. Well, that was my next question: was what's the first car to, that you modified? And that's, I mean, that answers that right there. Yeah, there there was this brand. Uh, I'm sure it's still a brand that supports this supercharger company. It's called Nine Twenty Eight Motorsports, and they sell uh, smaller pulleys for the Powerdyne supercharger, and uh, that was the first thing I did, right? Like, let's get this sucker making some boost. So I got like a 2.6 inch pulley for it and immediately made like 14 pounds of boost. And then <laughs> internally the supercharger failed <laughs> and ended up putting the impeller into the housing and blue chunks of impeller into the intake. Luckily I was able just to unhook the whole thing and then just drove it NA after that. But that was like my first modifying yeah. experience. You just, you just thought it was slow. Oh, it definitely was slow the whole time. It, <laughs> it was at the drag strip one time. I think it ran like a 15.3 or something. <laughs> it was bad. That's great. That, that is great. So what's your uh, current fleet of vehicles that you own today? Well, you know, I'm no J-Rod. All right. I heard I heard his Dude. list and I'm like, is Woo! this gonna stop? Like, what the <laughs> hell, brother? I, I feel highly inadequate. Just picked up that 03 Cobra um, that we just uploaded to our YouTube channel. Uh, I've got my STI in there. I just blew my Evo up last weekend. My Integra Type R's in there, my Dodge Stealth, a couple 3000 GTs, my O2 SS 35th anniversary Camaro, uh, my 30th anniversary WS6, uh, a couple sport bikes, and uh, my Viper. Uh, and then the two yeah. super away my 300 zx is away my rx 7s away they're all getting <laughs> yeah no, seriously uh so what do i have right now um probably best to think about what i just got rid of so i just got rid of a 2008 srt8 jeep that was something that i bought that was really cool uh mm -hmm. it had this like hennessy performance package on it like a heads and cam performance package nice. it was like the older wk1 uh na like the first gen srt8 yeah. jeep uh just got rid of that uh to fund Race rebuild repeat turns out takes money to do sick week. Who would have thought? <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll start from like the slowest thing. Uh, have a 2012 Chevy Volt. Okay. Pretty cool. Pretty much bought it in 14. It's pretty much totally ruined at this point. <laughs> uh, I have a 2012 Lincoln MKT EcoBoost 35. Okay. Kind of yeah. weird. Kind of like a hearse. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the wife's old car. That I'm now dailying. Uh, getting to the cool stuff. I got an '88 Caprice wagon. Actually, that yes, one. pretty badass. Olds 307 Quadrajet carb. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, CA keep carb keep carbs alive. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I have a friend uh, named Jason who's going to rebuild the carb at some point for me. But um, Frankie actually found that on the side of the road, and it was from uh, I think Tennessee or Kentucky. Rust free, like really really nice. It's got yeah. torque torque thrust wheels on it you know it's painted like a uh, candy kind of cherry red so really nice. like that thing i don't know what the hell i'm gonna do with it but <laughs> do something <laughs> cool i don't know like ls swap or i don't know there we go yeah we'll see what comes with that and then uh next thing i have uh 93 typhoon gmc typhoon okay. pretty mm -hmm. cool car oh yeah. yeah uh bought that early last year um and then also, early last year, I bought a 91 GMC Cyclone, and that's uh, what brought me here to this channel. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I was actually walking through the, it, of course, Cyclones are pretty rare when they're yeah. looking at drag and drive stuff. And uh, so I immediately sent it to my race car friends, uh, buddies, chat, you know, and they everybody lost their mind. So, of course, really? it just grew, and I had to talk to you. And, and then, you know, now we're here. 
But yeah, the Cyclone's been real transformative. It was kind of like uh, one of those you don't want to meet your heroes thing. Like right when I got it, it just, I didn't know how to work on it. There was all sorts of things that like are not new school, right? Like the yep. ECU has a turbo tweak. It's a prom. I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what prom means. Like, Does that mean that you got to like burn the chip? Yeah, take the chip out and put it in a computer and then do your things and then put it back in there? Literally. Someone's doing yeah. that. It's not me, but okay. someone is doing that. Uh, but yeah, it's been a really cool truck and obviously taking on a dragon drive is kind of scary. Like it doesn't even have a dent in it anywhere. So wow, but and it, it's super low miles. Yeah. It's got 60, well, 65,000 on it now, but I bought it with 61 and I actually drove it, uh, to Michigan from New York, like upstate New York when wow. I bought it. So it was like a 14 hour drive. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So like buy it low miles i'm driving <laughs> yeah, and it, it was in february like so many people in the community were very unhappy with that decision <laughs> and i guess hindsight bad idea but i felt like it was like a vice grip garagey kind of situation yeah you know? yeah i'm with you yeah how how long have you had the typhoon and the cyclone so i used to have a ram trx which was awesome like badass truck right but uh horrible daily driver like yeah almost almost the worst daily driver ever um, just because it's so bad on fuel. Like it's, it's, yeah. you get 10 miles to the gallon. You're filling up all the time. I spent like 150 bucks a week on gas because I, you know, was driving back and forth to work. And, uh, when I sold that, I had a little bit of equity and also, uh, and that's when I bought the typhoon, but then I was helping out a friend of mine for a long time with some money stuff that they had going on and they came into some money and then repaid me back all the money that I gave them over the course of like six years. Nice. So I'm like, yeah. okay, I wasn't expecting to get 30 grand. What am I going to buy? <laughs> Cyclone, right. done. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't pay any of my outstanding student loan debt. Don't do anything responsible. <laughs> like, let's buy yeah. a freaking Cyclone, brother. So yeah. well, yep. you had the Typhoon. You had to have the Cyclone. Well, I had the Cyclone first, right? And so I bought the Cyclone in February. I bought the Typhoon in like, I don't know. I forget what it was, March or April or something. Oh, yeah. So uh, but when I had the Cyclone, I sat in it. And I said, I don't fit in this truck, but I was already there. I'm in upstate New York. I flew in. I'm yep. driving 14 hours home. Like, I don't have a choice, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. That makes sense completely. Yeah, I, got, I, I, got I appreciate a, that. I got a buddy that uh, used to live in the town that I live in, but now he moved. Uh, he's out in Tennessee, but he also has a cyclone and a typhoon. Dude, hell yeah. So yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, the, the Typhoon's definitely way more comfortable. The seats lean back. The 93 has a different set of seats than the, than the 92. So, like, they're just wider. They don't have as much bolstering. They didn't really understand bolstering in 1991, turns out. So, for me, like, the bolster for your head is, like, in the middle of my back. So, I'm sitting there like this, trying to drive it. And if I sit like this, I can't see out of it. So, I got to go like this. <laughs> I end up looking like Edgar from friggin' Men in Black, dude. It's not good. <laughs> and, and so... You put 800 miles on it uh, during sick week. Why, yeah. why did you take the typhoon on sick week? So the typhoon had a massive oil leak. Uh, <laughs> and that one's like totally, totally stock. So I figured it would be like way slower. The cyclone's got a little bit of mods. But like the typhoon was leaking oil. Like every time you started it, we're talking maybe a quart a minute. Something oh, yeah. was wrong yeah. with the remote That's oil filter much. adapter. And it was just yep. toof, coming right out. So I didn't want to didn't risk that. <laughs> Right. So, um, why, why did you guys choose sick week to, to kick off your, uh, your drag and drive experience? Yeah. For, for me, it was just an idea to kick off the entire YouTube channel. Right. So a lot of the automotive community is in Florida, friends with Cletus, friends with all the people down in Florida. And, uh, you know, I really wanted an excuse to get down there, kind of escape the weather in Michigan. And when you get down into that area and there's all those things going on, the ability to create content is, is off the charts. Like yeah. everything's happening and uh, it just made sense. And Frank, I'm sure who's watching right now, we were actually supposed to take his 05 Magnum that he bought. It's a Hemi. Yep. And uh, right before we left, we took it to a tuner. There was an unfortunate issue with the control module being unplugged. And uh, when the tuner tuned it, it like disconnected the transmission from the control module. And they just didn't, you know, come back together. So it was stuck in limp mode. And then I'm like, okay, we got to take something else. I have the cyclone in storage. Let's get it out and fix it up and, and take it. Well, Wait, everybody, everybody loves the thrash. Yeah, the thrash. I didn't even want to do the thrash. The whole idea was like, uh, let's take a cheap Hemi and road trip it to 
it's a sick week, but it just didn't work out that way. But I think the way it did work out was as good as it could be. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you got to go into a little more depth because I was actually cracking up when I was listening to the Cooper podcast about okay. how the Magnum actually had that issue of of that connector being unplugged and, and the fuse and, and what was purchased and from where to get to that point. Well, let me first apologize to Frank. Sorry, Frank. Uh, so you can blame it on me. He's late night surgeon Timu, right? We all saw the Super Bowl commercials. They call it Temu now, but last year it was mm. Timu. So I don't know what's what, but uh, he's searching Timu. They give you like, you know, 97,000% off your first purchase. So he's buying all sorts of stuff. He buys underglow for the car which is kind of like ironically cool now, I guess. Yep. It's coming Dude, back. This, yeah, it was cool in the early 2000s. Now it's back, man. So it's like this cycle. Just, you know. Yeah, I don't know. It's like Corona, right? I'm channeling my inner Dominic Toretto here with the Corona. But, uh, you know, uh, he buys the the underglow from Timu for like six cents or whatever, and he puts it on in secret, and he's going to surprise me with it. When he wires it up, he wires it to the fuse for the front control module which is just like a random 15 amp fuse. It doesn't look that important. And uh, of course the underglow failed and it was stuck on. And so when we were at the tuner, I don't know why he thought to turn it off when it was on the dyno, but to turn it off, uh, he just pulled the fuse and then it just disconnected the front control module to the trans. Oh and man. It like, so, it so did bad. you, did you, did you realize that at that point? Dude, hell no. We had no clue what was going on. Like we were so excited. Unplugs the underglow and you're like, why won't this thing connect? <laughs> well, like it had problems too, like because he's doing these giant one tire fires, you know, with it because it's a Hemi, but it's got an open rear end, so it'll just bake one tire off, and sometimes it goes into limp mode, and also the the cruise control doesn't work. So like, there's obviously some sort of problem going on with this thing. So when it was failing on the dyno, it was like, okay, all right, maybe there's something related to that. I had no clue it had to do yep. with the front control module being disconnected. <laughs> so stupid. But you know, man. that's the story for you, dude. Uh, Underglow is, is coming back, man. It's it's great. I would have I would have loved to see you guys pull up in that. But let's be honest, dude, I don't. You wouldn't have got as much attention in the in the Magnum. It, yeah, it would have been fun. Story, and it would have yeah. been way more comfortable. But um, yeah, it was it was worth it to me for you guys to be uncomfortable for the week. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm so happy we did it. And the best part about it is, I think it created a better story. Right, because yep. the cyclone required a ton of work. We took it to this really cool shop uh, north of Tampa that does cyclones and typhoons only. It's called Sport wow. Machines LLC. They had like 22 cyclones and typhoons on property that they're working on. And the guy, when I called him and told him what we were doing, he was pretty pissed, right? <laughs> and Frank's like, I would have hung up on that guy. I'm like, ah, oh, no, I don't want to hang up on him. I think he knows what he's yep. doing. So we took it there, and literally it was a 13-hour day getting this thing completely ready. And the truck is like 10 times better than it's ever been. So oh, not yeah. only now do I have a properly running cyclone that I couldn't have fixed myself, but, you know, created some great memories on the, on the drag and drive as well. Well, and you get to meet, I mean, let's, let's be honest. The dude that worked on that thing had to be like the knowledge. He was a book, you know, all the stuff that was on. The, I, I can't imagine that guy probably gets as nerdy about that stuff or more than I do about the drag and drive stats. It's unbelievable. The amount of information there is about vehicles that were built for two years. So the cyclone was 91 only and the typhoon was 92, 93, but there's so much lore surrounding these within GM, within dealers. There's all sorts of rumors. There's potential things that could have happened. There's things that did happen. Like it, there's so much info just surrounding those two vehicles. It's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah, that's intense. So it gave you a pretty good, uh, you know, like uh, made you feel good about owning both of them. You know, I can only imagine that would be you're like, <laughs> yeah, OK, OK, I'm cool. <laughs> yeah. And what I said on uh, Cooper's podcast was, man, like I was totally fine with having them and just letting them sit in a garage forever. You know, I'll drive them. They'll run crappy. I'll be like, all right, whatever. I'll just look at them. But then I uh, couldn't do that anymore, unfortunately. So I had to, you know, actually use them and turns out it's just way better to drive the cars you have than to look at them. I'm sure anyone watching can agree with yep. that. Yep. yep. hundred percent. Was that the guy that you had said that had like every bolt available for those vehicles? <sighs> yeah. His name is Tom and he has everything like he's, I'm sure, I don't know if he's broken down total trucks or has just accumulated it over time or I don't know how we got these, but like literally he has diagrams and 
bins that have bolts for every piece of the vehicle, no matter where you're looking. Cause you know, obviously the bolts are very similar throughout, let's say body mounts or whatever, yeah. but some are longer than others. So to have the proper bolt, you need to know where it's coming from. And he just has everything laid out in a way that's beyond my ability to do. So anybody that's listening that has one of those vehicles, that's, that's the guy they need to get in touch with. It's almost impossible to not know the guy. Like uh, he owns uh, all of the Facebook groups. He's the admin for like the old forums that no one really uses anymore. He yeah. puts on the big Cyclone Typhoon meet at the Carlisle mm -hmm. Truck Show. Like he is the guy. Like if you don't know Tom, like you're living <laughs> under a rock. Yeah, dude. How, talk, that, that's just really kind of a cool setup, though. Like because you're down there, you, you you choose to bring that one. Obviously, you're down there, and you're like, hey, listen, we're close enough to this guy that, like, I mean, that in itself adds to the story. You know that you had Tom work on it. You know. Yeah, like it was, it's like anything. It's like if, uh, you know, maybe this is a little bit overshooting it, but let's say you crack the screen on your iPhone and Steve Jobs fixed it. That's kind of how it felt to me. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. Like I got the guy working on this thing and, you know, it was, it was such a humbling experience to know that someone knows that much about a particular yep. product, you know, like obviously he lives and breathes it. Yeah. Yeah. So what you, you had mentioned, there was a lot of work that needed to be done. What all had to be fixed before you could take it on sick week? Well, so I had basically maybe 10 minutes because I was very, very busy last year uh, managing side by side blog before I left. <clears throat> and uh, I never really got a chance to look at the truck and figure out how to like what was wrong with it. Right. It was breaking up and the higher PMs. It would randomly throw a check engine light like flashing, which means you have knock retard. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on with this thing. I would fill it up with uh, 110 octane once in a while and then it wouldn't do it anymore. So I thought, OK, yeah. something got spicy in the tuning or whatever. So before we left, uh, we loaded it up and it wouldn't make boost at all. And I'm like, oh, my oh. gosh, like this is a huge problem. So I'm looking at it. It has like an ancient map sensor. That's a three bar. and they came with two bar from the factory and the only car that came with three bar from the factory was the 89 turbo trans am that had a grand national motor in it so we found a dealer that had one of these in stock turns out sport machines in florida had like 100 map sensors that were three bar right but we didn't know that at the time so we went to this random dealership in uh kentucky called mcfarland chevrolet turns yeah. out they yeah. have like a ton of badass cars there and uh got the map sensor it made boost and i thought i was good but when i took it on the sport machines turns out it needed so many things like the diaphragm on the fuel pressure regulator was leaking so it was filling the vacuum lines with gas and then that was making its way back into the intake and then ruining any sensor that was hooked up to the vacuum line and like the plug wires were wrong the plug gap was wrong uh the intercooler was leaking internally so i was just sucking in coolant into the motor i had no idea and there was just a ton of little random things that were fixed. And it went from like a jalopy, but it's a cyclone, but it's a jalopy to like mm -hmm. a real like badass truck when we were done. With yes. It. That's cool, man. Yep. Sweet. Uh, you ran in the D class at sick week, which is <laughs> 1150 and up. Right. So what did, yeah. what did the, what did it run? So we, we were trying to go off idle just for consistency, right? Brake boosting on those is tough. The brake system's crappy. The vacuum system's crappy. Uh, so we were just going off idle and we were shooting for like a 13.0. So our dial in after day one was 13.04. Uh, it, we, I think, placed eighth in the class, which was pretty good. Top pretty 10. Pretty awesome. Yeah. But Gainesville screwed us, man. Like when you're, when you're D class, you only get you get maybe three runs total, right? So you get mm -hmm. two during the time. If, of the call. Well, yeah, I was going to say you get three runs if you wait till the last second of the day. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you're one of the last cars making a pass, you're getting three maybe. Yeah, that's what's rough about it. So we were shooting for that 1304. Like I said, mm -hmm. I think I think our spread was uh, 093 at the end, which was wow. pretty decent. It was good enough to, to place eighth, which you know didn't get us anything. But uh, the final day, we got some uh, Q16 from VP, and I tried to turn the boost up, uh, but it didn't work. But Frank, who was the driver during the entire week, he boost launched it and ran it to a 13, or no, sorry, ran it to a 1254. So Wow, that cool. that's awesome. Yeah, nice. half second gain just from a boost launch. So that's pretty <laughs> badass. Yeah. <laughs> right? 
his foot's on the brake. Please hold, please hold, please yeah. hold. <laughs> yeah, you got to do this thing where you pull up, so you got to double bulb, right? Which no one likes double bulb in the other guy. <laughs> but you have to go up, you double bulb, you put it in neutral, you rev it up, build some vacuum. And while you're doing that, you're pumping the brakes. And on your final rev, you hold the brake, and then you can finally get into the <laughs> brake boosting procedure. Otherwise, it just pushes through the brakes. Nice. Wow. That's awesome. Well, um, I do want to know, did other people kind of, how did everybody else receive the cyclone that was, that was down there where you guys just covered up with folks all the time? Probably 90% of the time there was either someone looking at it or talking about it, which was awesome. Like yep. I love talking to people. I love meeting new people. Uh, we gained a couple of friends, obviously you Mike on the whole deal, just from a random pizza encounter, not so much the cyclone, but uh, <laughs> yeah. it's just so many people like seeing it. A lot of people said, oh, my uncle had one or my brother had one or my my friend's dad had one and just kind of really felt the nostalgia uh, of seeing that truck again because it is something you don't see very often, which is cool. Right. And uh, it, it's a clean example, too, which is nice. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking up here to see uh, it literally is the first picture I took at sick week. The first vehicle <laughs> picture. It's no not, way. I, I took some videos of other cars, but it's the first picture I took down there. Oh, that's awesome. And I see that's Frank Frank's commenting the coat. Okay. This yeah. is a, this is a big story. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. Tell, tell us about the coat. All right. So there's two coats in question. First one, not that exciting. I highly overpaid for like a, like an old school cyclone coat that I don't know, came from a dealer or something. It's like it looks like something Danny Tanner would wear from Full House. Like this yes. thing sucks. Oh, the colors like like denim and then green. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. all faded. Like it's so bad. And uh, a guy named Ian reached out to us and he's like, "I got this other Cyclone coat. I want to send it to you." And Frank can, can wear the coat. And of course, it's like this. It looks like the heartbeat of America coats that you see. It's like perfect yeah. condition, right? It's black. It has a red Cyclone. Uh, uh, embroidery in it and he sent it to us in Gainesville and we got it at the end of the day and Frank ripped the coat <laughs> the whole time like dude. he loved it dude it, it yes. was so good it, it was great there's a, a small part in the video that you can see it and man I'm telling you that that thing that made the week that made the whole I would think like now that thing needs to hang on the hanger in the truck you know yeah I feel like the coat is just not even mine like when the truck goes away if it ever does like the yeah, coat goes gets... with it like it, it oh, belongs yeah. to the truck so everybody kind of fangirled, I would imagine. And then how did you guys feel at the end of the week? You made it. Like, what was the Friday vibe? Friday vibe was just so badass. Like, we stayed all the way to the bitter end. We watched the trophy ceremony. Um, some people left that I was going to see during the weekend. So I actually got to bring a trophy with me. It was nice. James' trophy for getting second place <laughs> in the 275 class. So it was cool to take a trophy, even though it wasn't mine. It was cool to have one. But like the the relief after you complete a drag and drive, even in D class, which I know isn't the coolest class, but just the relief of finishing that is something I've not felt before. Like, yeah, it was a long week. It was so much driving crappy hotels. Right. Because like we're booking last minute because I'm thinking the truck's going to break. So I'm not <laughs> I'm not going to book the Hampton Inn three days out. I'm going to book the yep. Super 8 two hours before. And yep. uh, just everything about it was just uh, really, really enjoyable. I just don't think there's any way we don't do one again. Like, yep. they're so cool. Well, that's good to hear. And Eric is Eric is the three day ahead guy. He wants to book Smart. a hotel. But dude, I'm the same. I'm like, no. Listen, we don't know if we're going to be here tomorrow. Well, something's going to break. Somebody's going to break. We're going to end up having to go back and rescue somebody. I'm not booking hotels till. 11 o'clock at night and hoping we find one within 50 miles. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that is, man, we, we stayed in Georgia. We stayed in, uh, it was north of Eldosta somewhere, but man, a dude was trying, a local guy was trying to break in to all the rooms there and he knocked on the door and the police showed up and Frank went outside to get something out of the truck at the time. And he comes back in. He's like, we got to get out of here, dude. There's a dude <laughs> trying to break in. I'm like, I'm trying to edit video, bro. Like <laughs> we gotta do something. We ended up staying there and we were all good, but yeah. Yeah. Chris, <sighs> you're saying uh, Georgia was so rough. Some people got the Hampton in, which I assume was nice or stayed yeah. in. I, I don't know if it was Valdosta or whatever <laughs> the town was, but if you stayed in town, it was okay. But North yeah. where we stayed was, I would say not nice. 
Yeah, Frankie said, no, we're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he yeah. said. <laughs> That's great. Well, uh, let's let's stay on the YouTube topic for a second because I want people to understand, like you coming in, obviously you've edited thousands of videos in the past. You yep. have a pretty good process. You know what's going on. Yep. But talk to us about your editing process for Sick Week. Like, did you record all day and then try and edit a daily video? And then how late did you stay up at night? Yeah, so the editing process, I knew I couldn't compete with some people, right? So the Cyclone didn't have, uh, of course, okay, I'll back up. So of course I use like a gaming computer to edit on, right? It's Windows based. I tried the Mac thing. It just doesn't work uh, for me and my workflow. So I have like this old, it's like a 2018 gaming computer. So it requires like 400 watts of power, which of course the cigarette lighter on the Cyclone is not going to do. No. So while we're on the road, I can edit on the battery, which lasts like maybe 40 minutes. And then I'm cooked yeah. until we get to a hotel room. So I already knew I wasn't going to be able to keep up with like the editing team that Tom Bailey had or 1320 yeah. or Garrett. Uh, so I kind of went about it a little bit different. I wanted to document more of the the drive and more of the things that you see during the drive, as opposed to just like really hammering the drag race content. Cause I knew I yeah. couldn't keep up. Right. So it's important to kind of throw a different spin on the content. Uh, and just create a story out of it, create a story arc, you know, talk about what's going to happen the next time they tune in, you know, and kind of leave them hanging a little bit. But I think I finished the entire week's content uh, that following Sunday or Monday. So it wasn't, I wasn't like a week behind, but I definitely wasn't day by day, but I was staying up late. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's pretty intense to try and keep yeah, even just moving the footage you take for like to a hard drive like you, just moving it from your camera or your phone or whatever is hard because i can't imagine what that would be like in a regular cab pickup with a tonneau cover and i wish i had pictures of all the stuff that you guys had because it was everything <laughs> Dude, that entire bed had to be filled dude i don't know like <laughs> frank brought a cutoff wheel like, like i i get it <laughs> but like you know, do we really need the cutoff wheel? And of course it had like the eight amp hour battery. It was a Milwaukee, right? So it had the big yep. battery and it was just that entire mentality throughout everything that we brought. <laughs> like we brought a nice rocking chair so we can sit in. We brought a little table from Bucky's yep. and we were on the bump stops, like literally the whole time. Like, <laughs> I, I think we were over the beds capacity and then you add us in the cab. Like it was yep. full bump stop the whole way. So it was a rough ride for sure. Yeah. I tell you though, the, the cutoff wheel is a uh, multi-functional tool when you're on the road like that, though. True, so. true. Yeah. You need to, like, make fire sparks. <laughs> you got that. Well, yeah. hey, at some point, you may have needed to shave those bump stops down. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part is, like, <laughs> when I was getting to work done at Sport Machines, you know, the Friday before uh, oh, yeah. we were doing stuff, he's, like, telling me all these things that it needs, and I'm bleeding dry at this point on money. And like the important stuff, intercooler, tune up, fuel pressure regulator, injector, like all these things. I'm like, okay, I need that. He's like, you ain't got much left on your bump stops. I'm like, dude, I don't give a crap, which was obviously a huge mistake because we rode on them the entire time. <laughs> yeah, you, sh you should have spent $82 and bought new bump stops. It was just, well, it was just I'm saying, right from, from Tom, they'd have been 300 or so. You're like, these are special. These are new, <laughs> these are NOS parts. You're thinking to ruin them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, Frank makes a good point here in the chat, too. So we had yes. the tools, so we didn't need them. That's how it works. Yes. Well, yep. that that is exactly how drag and drop works, one hundred percent for sure. <laughs> the worst, the worst part about the whole thing is, so I run the truck on Valvoline VR1 because I feel like old motor needs some sort of zinc, right? Whatever, okay. and it needed a quart of oil, but it was so far in the bed that we just ended up going to an O'Reilly's <laughs> buying a quart. So <laughs> what we brought, we didn't even need any of it. Like it was, it was pretty silly. That's awesome. Well, next time you'll pack less and you'll need more. It'll be great, man. It'll be, <laughs> you'll have the him, you'll have the Magnum fix and it'll be, it'll be on. Yeah. Um, it'll need, it'll or, need you'll, everything. or you'll pull a trailer and you'll put more in it than you even needed. I yeah. saw a lot of that. I think I saw a 240 yeah. pulling like a 14 foot trailer. Did you guys see yeah. that sucker? Oh what yeah. What was that about? Dude, I, I love the trailer game. Like yeah. it has like completely just gone nuts. So you saw, I'm sure you saw the Van Halen trailer by Andrew Taylor. Like, yeah. I love all the different stuff that people bring. And 
Yeah, that's badass. I feel like yeah. it, that's such a unique thing. Like there was a dude yeah. in, I don't know, old cars very well. Maybe it was an old Ford, an old Chevy, but he had the boat behind him, like the old yes. John boat. Yes. Dude, that was yeah. so cool. Yeah. Uh, that was Michael Heston in that gasser pickup truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of those guys. Yeah. We've got a, a video coming out with them here pretty soon. And so, yeah, actually, this is him right here, the bucket list mob. <laughs> well, that's Talk him. Yeah, that's him. No that's way, dude. Awesome. That was yeah. the best trailer of the week, in my opinion. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he, yeah I loved it. Loved their whole said, story, whole crew. He, he said, I thought we should bring a 110 welder. I told the guys, if we bring it, we won't need it. They said they didn't want to bring it. Guess what? Five <laughs> days. We needed it. <laughs> Ain't that the truth, man? <laughs> yep. That's exactly right. It's uh, it's pretty intense. And, and I hope that some of the folks, because, dude, I mean, you guys crossed 31,000 subscribers on your channel. Yep. I hope that the growth that you guys have seen, I hope that kind of comes up. We're going to see more people into the Dragon Drive community because of what, because of y'all's experience. I think because you guys had a great one. I think everybody, it shows that everybody can have a good time, no matter the ET. Yeah, yeah, that's totally the case too. And I think like uh, what J Rod was saying earlier makes sense. Like the classes that have the slower cars in it are for the people, right? Yeah. Not everyone can afford to have a. I mean, even a nine second car takes that's a lot oh, of yeah. money, right? Yeah. I mean, you guys know. And uh, yeah, having these like 12, 13, 14 second cars and really just getting out there, you know, they're going to feed the entire event. So the event's yep. only going to get better the more people you have. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's what I, that's what I was saying earlier about Rocky Mountain Race Week. I like that they allow veteran racers to come back from the year before. They get early access, so it becomes very easy to create a family atmosphere because you're mm. literally bringing 70% of the people from last year. You're bringing them back. They're coming yeah. back and racing. So it's pretty awesome, man. I love it. And, it, and we see that a lot at Sick Week. And now that there's 30 events, I get to see my race car friends a lot more often. But early on, you didn't really get to do that. So. Yeah, when I that first cool. f- heard of Dragon Drive, I think Rocky Mountain Race Week or, or Drag Week, but is it Hot mm-hmm. Rod that puts that on Hot Rod? Yep, yep, yep. That was the first time I heard of anything like that, and a couple friends that I had did them like a long time ago. I yeah. thought, man, that's just crazy. I don't think that'll catch on. But after doing one, it's like, oh, holy crap. It's like a rolling car show. Yeah. And then you get to see the cars go fast. You just don't yeah. get to see them sit there and, hey, don't touch this. It's like, no, yep. these cars are going to drive on the street and they're going to rip. Like, it's it's transformative for the drag race community, in my opinion. Yep. I, I love, and it gives people a reason. Like, there's a lot of, like, COVID was bad in a lot of aspects, but really it created, now that it's over and people are back out in the world, like, people want to do fun stuff. And it's it's a perfect thing for for car guys and girls to, to be able to do that. Well, let's talk about the Typhoon. I want to jump back onto that for a second because that is, like, my jam. I had a had a two door S10 Blazer in high school. That's sweet. Body. You know, it had a V8 in it, so it wasn't as cool as a Typhoon, but uh, it was a lot of fun. It was, I, I always threatened that I'm going to rebuild that thing. But uh, like, what are the plans for it? Are you going to be going to do some mod set, or is it one of those things that's going to, hey, let's uh, almost kind of keep it stock and uh, let it appreciate in value? I, I none of those plans are what's going to happen actually so uh when i was managing side by side blog like the biggest revenue generator was giveaways right sweepstakes yep. you see all the big channels doing it and uh that's what we're going to do with the typhoon that's the first time i'm saying it publicly oh. here oh, but wow. uh yeah that's what's going to happen with that so i don't have timing on that it's really difficult to source proper merch and designs and fulfillment like these are all things that yep. i'm starting off fresh with uh so yeah that's uh, a lot of work to do but i think that's the plan with the typhoon yes. is to is to kind of give it back to someone and it is like bone stock down to you know a functioning egr which is like the first wow. thing you get rid of if anyone you know modifies these things so i think that's going to be a fun way to give back to some people that want to support us you know there's yeah. a lot of people asking for merch already so uh might as well give them an excuse to buy it and uh give away a really nice vehicle so well i know I, i'll be buying some for sure yeah i appreciate I that in my life <laughs> <laughs> dude it's really nice too it's been repainted and someone really took care of the body on it when they repainted it wow. like it's straight and it's it's gloss black not only on the body but on the cladding too which is like a really cool look on those hey, nice cool Eric yeah. here is asking how many entries for an R3 tattoo. I don't know, brother. I don't, it, you have to read the rules, dude. I don't know. There, please. We'll put in, we'll put in a oh. special clause or something. For I was going to sure. say, please, sweet baby Jesus, give us a, a R3 tattoo clause on the <laughs> number of Typhoon tickets. Could you, yeah. could you imagine how many people would actually go do that, though? 
You know, I mean, like th- that's a real that's so when you do sweepstakes, like so I ran nine or ten of them and like I have my head wrapped around it pretty good. There's this thing called an alternative method of entry, and that's like the mail in entry. You know, that's yep. the no purchase necessary. Yep. And you can put in there whatever the hell you want. Like you could say, show me a picture of your tattoo and you'll get 100 entries. Like that's a real thing. Wow. So I don't, you know, I don't think that <laughs> is like a, I, I think we could do that. So no, right. we'll see. I don't know. Well, Eric's in. Eric yeah. Scott, not okay. Eric White. Eric Scott is in. I, hey, hey I'm, I'm in too. <laughs> Perfect. You guys are nuts. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Eric Scott said he'll, he'll sign a contract at Burnout Rivals. <laughs> okay. All right. what, sure. What's up next, man? What are you guys going to be doing? Yeah. So I think, you know, when you start a YouTube channel, uh, maybe you had an idea in mind for what you're doing. Obviously, given the name, you know, it's pretty obvious you're, you're, you're doing what you want to do here. But we didn't really know what was going to work or what was going to hit. Uh, the car stuff is where I've been my entire life, you know getting into the side-by-sides was just a cool way to experience what I wanted to experience in a vehicle that I couldn't afford. Mm-hmm. But now side-by-sides are, you know, they're more expensive than vehicles yep. at this point. Yeah. Uh, you know, the first one I bought was eight grand, right? First yep. side-by-side. And I had just as much fun as ones I paid 50 grand for. So it's kind of a weird thing. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah. And so now, you know, we're not like me and Frank aren't like genius workers on things. Like I had other people, fixing my stuff for a long time. So kind of getting back into the ropes of working on stuff. So we're calling it two morons garage, just as a joke. <laughs> <laughs> nice. but, but I think, uh, you know, if, if I was to put a number on it, probably 50% automotive and 50% power sports. So not yeah. just side by sides, but you know, ATVs, dirt bikes, anything else that's not car related. Yeah. That's cool. So, uh, some jet skis, can we get some vintage jet skis in there? Dude, I got jet skis. Like, you know, oh. super fun to drive in terms of making videos, almost impossible. Yeah. I do. I can't imagine. I, yeah. you, almost, you have to like run into something for a, a, like a jet ski video to do anything. I would imagine. It's like anything, you know, <laughs> Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're like in torrential winds and, and downpour and there's huge waves, like maybe that could be cool, but you know, it's hard to really share those type of experiences. on yeah. video. The, the life of a YouTuber. I know she's tough, dude. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, uh, so that so that's kind of the channel. What about for the cars? I don't really know. So today we actually just filmed a video with a place called DNR Customs. So that's ran by a gentleman named Derek Rose, and he, believe it or not, owns the world's fastest uh, four wheel drive diesel truck. So oh. I don't know about fastest, but I, you oh, get man. the quickest fastest thing. It runs like four forties in the eighth which Let's is go. big time, right? Yeah. And I'm pretty sure he holds the record on that. So we went to his shop and he showed us some pretty crazy diesel trucks, uh, almost put one into a ditch, which was pretty wild. But I think we're going to do a diesel burnout truck. I know JH Diesel for like the burnout yeah. rivals events yeah. um, with Cletus. He couldn't make a diesel truck work. And uh, Derek's pretty confident that if we just get him the right truck, he can make it work. So yeah. That's sort of the hope uh, moving forward is to have a badass diesel truck to do some burnouts in and have some fun with. Well, uh, so after after this, I'll introduce you to Danny Diesel, who's kind of a a good friend of Daniel Green. Okay, uh, a big diesel guy. So maybe that'll kind of help too. You know, Uh, I could use all the help we could get. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. I mean, like that, that guy understands diesel stuff way more than I do. And so, yeah, yeah, you guys probably have a good head on your shoulders for finding the people that can help with that. But Danny's a good access for that too. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and Frank used to be big in the diesel truck game back in the day. He had a shop that did diesel performance and a lot of uh, like under undercoating stuff for bodies. So he's worked his way into the diesel truck stuff. He's always loved diesel trucks and I've never been in a fast one until today. And pff, I don't know if you guys been in a fast diesel truck before, but mind the hell dude. Like, and it doesn't stop. It's a train that's going really yeah. fast. Like yeah. it, it just doesn't stop pulling, you know, uh, gasoline stuff will kind of die off and then shift it. Yeah. Diesel stuff like, nope. It's like, as soon as it shifts, it's going faster. It's like, man, I'm in the, I mean, like 20 inch lifted 2,500 <laughs> yeah. Cummins. How is it doing this? You know? Yeah. That's crazy. Exactly right. Yep. Well, this uh, question here leads right into the next question I had was sure. what events do you have planned for 2024? So, um, uh, Luke is asking about Cletus events, Freedom 500, Bristol 1000. So what yeah. do you got going on for the rest of the year for events? 
So I think we do still want to attend the Cletus events, uh, at least in some sort of fashion. Obviously, with, with Side by Side Blog, we had a lot bigger showing because there was a specific burnout side by side. Uh, of course, I don't have that stuff now. So uh, with Race Rebuild Repeat, I think it's just kind of getting there and experiencing the events, helping out where we can, and uh, ideally showing up with a burnout truck. Uh, in terms of you know his races that he does with Crown Vix, you know, I've been in many 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 of them and and uh have done decent i've gotten second or third pretty much every time i've raced and uh i think you can only be bridesmaid for so long you know and i'm, I'm happy to kind of <laughs> allow other people to get in there that have bigger names to to push that event better than than we can but uh, ideally at some point we'll we'll come back and do some races maybe get frank out on the track a little bit that's there awesome what other what other kind of events? I know somebody here earlier asked about drag and drive events. Are you doing any more of those this year? It's so it's so tough. Like as you guys know with scheduling, right? And when you have such a, a YouTube channel in, in its infancy, it's really difficult to know where to put your money, right? Mm -hmm. So we're only a month in, and it's doing way better than I thought it would. So I don't know exactly what to do. You know, we have a lot of uh, vehicles we could do stuff with. We have a couple side by sides. And I think we're just going to kind of gravitate towards what we like. We haven't really scheduled much for the future because the future, honestly, is it's un, it's unclear what's yeah. going to happen uh, with the channel and, and the future of us. Is this a viable thing? Am I going to have to sell off everything I have to keep it going and eventually be broke? I don't really know. I hope that's not the case, <laughs> but uh, we're just going to do what we like to do. And uh, in terms of events, we don't really have much scheduled. I know that sounds yeah. crazy, but it's yeah. it's tough. Well, yep. John Paul Franks here says, love to have you come out to Heads Up Hustle, which is the one in Michigan. Yeah, so, okay, I shouldn't have said all of that because we do have a lot of plans with the Supra <laughs> that I drive for Don Somerton. So uh, I'm sure, Mike, you were going to lead into that question at some point before we <laughs> yep. call it a night here. But uh, to catch anyone up that doesn't know, so Don Somerton is the owner of Accelerated Performance in Toledo, Ohio. He's uh, good friends with J-Rod. And anything to J, he's – his hands have been in it since since before it was cool, right? Way before Fast and Furious. And uh, the cars he's built have held records for a long time. And uh, he got out of it uh, a while ago and sort of got back in it when I found out that he had a super badass, like, uh, back half Supra. And the option was put out to the entire team uh, that I previously worked with. And no one wanted to drive. And I'm like, I guess I'll do it. <laughs> and Mike, you know, like I'm tall and I have yeah. a long torso. I don't know what happened there with the genetics, but uh, we had to do a lot of modifications for me to fit in that car. And now it's like literally built around me. Like a normal person wow. couldn't That's reach awesome. the gas pedal or steer it properly. So this year it's going to be full on super stuff. We'll see what we can do with that. It's been a best of 680 blowing up at the thousand foot. Um, so we're hoping for, I don't know, something crazy, 650s maybe. I don't uh, know. Yeah. Man, that's that's so fast. And so is that yeah. like a purpose-built car? I mean, that's a that's not a car that's probably going to do a heads-up hustle, drag and drive. That's more of something that's going to be Texas 2K World Cup final stuff? Yeah, so the hope, so we did World Cup final in 2022 and uh, really want to go back. In 23, the timing just didn't work with the team that I was with. And uh, Don had some other things going on too. Uh, but this year, you know, we're more laser focused on getting that done. But the car is like specific drag car. Like when you're talking 2J stuff, it's once you get into the sixes and you're on methadol and, you know, there's no radiator like it's yeah. and being a back half car, you know, spooled rear end giant tires like it's, you know, not something you're going to have on the street unless you're on street outlaws or something. But. I mean, you know, it's crazy to think that like, like J-Rod said earlier, you know, 180 cubic inches and, yeah. and then, you know, sixes is crazy. Yeah. The things that Don does to make that car work is, is next level. You know, you're talking three injectors per cylinder. You're talking a decent shot of nitrous to spool the turbo. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in the Warriors first trace Quarto class at world cup. So it's like a 94.9 millimeter turbo. Uh, and the amount of power you can make with that is insane. North of 2,500 yep. horsepower out of, out of a small, small motor. Yeah. All the RPMs and all of the airflow. Every, yeah. like, like we talked with um, 
Jerry and Matt Sweet about NA stuff. Everything is important at that level, especially with that small of cubic inches. Yeah, what's super weird about that car is when something small goes wrong, it's so difficult to trace back what it might have been because when it goes wrong, it goes wrong spectacularly. So uh, there was yeah. multiple rotating assemblies ruined, uh, and we found out it was because of a spark plug. You know, we thought we thought it was detonating or something was going on. But this, uh, I don't want to name the brand in case uh, they're like a sponsor or something. But <laughs> the specific racing plugs that uh, we were using at the time, uh, the electrodes were loose in the insulator. Wow. And that wasn't allowing proper heat transfer back to the insulator. Yep. Uh, and it was just turning itself into a molten ball of lava. <laughs> and it looked like it was detonation. But yep. turns out it was just the electrode melting and causing this thing to basically melt itself down almost every run which is wow. difficult to deal with yeah yeah that gets that gets expensive quick well yeah. one more time, run through where people can find you and uh kind of what your schedule is and all that stuff like for uh, posting sure yep so race rebuild repeat on all social media uh have a url locked in we don't have a website yet but we'll get there when it comes time to sell some merch and uh, in terms of video uh, i found you know through my experience a tuesday uh thursday saturday or sunday morning works out well, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays at night, 6, 7 p.m. somewhere in there. And then Sunday morning, trying to kind of recreate that TNN vibe that we all had yes. back in the day. Uh, just putting out a video Sunday morning for everyone to watch is fun too. So that's what we're shooting for. You know, we're yeah. kind of uh, going from the hip on a lot of the video <laughs> because we don't have a big catalog of uh, content. But you're, uh, you're creating it in the moment. That's And dude, the, yeah. I think that's really cool because then people get used to seeing like what you're working on right now. It's not three yeah. or four months late. Yep. Yeah. And it keeps it fresh for you too, which is important. Yep. You know, you're not working on something for, for weeks. You're just working on a single thing that, you know, yep. happened yesterday. So <laughs> that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for hanging out. Please stay with us. We're going to, we're going to close out the show, but uh, we definitely want to, you know, let you and Eric talk for a few minutes. I'm sure he's got a ton of questions, but dude, congratulations on all your success. You've Thanks, earned every, every bit of it. I mean, 31,000 subs in what a month. I mean, yeah, did it hit 31,000? Let me check this real it's, quick. Let me... It's got to be really close to that because I know you had crossed 30 sometime in the last couple of days, and it's it's just been fun watching you guys. Now, it's uh, yeah, race for Builder Pete. Get, get on there, get get in early. That's what we'll say. Get in early. <laughs> yeah, when that typhoon giveaway comes, Brody, be ready. <laughs> That's gonna be a exactly lot of fun. Right. Awesome, yeah. man. Well, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna put you backstage and close this thing out. Excellent, thank you guys. Thanks. Dude, what a fun show tonight, man. It's it's been a great show. We had two two announcements that you hear here first, nowhere yeah. else. So yeah. you've got Ty the uh food giveaway. I mean, dude, listen, you're gonna yeah. see me. I'll be wearing some R3 shirts. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and then uh the off-road kind of drag and drive yep. event is gonna be pretty sweet too. So yeah, yeah. uh awesome show tonight. Yeah. Yeah. We had a good time, guys. Again, want to say thank you so much to everybody. want to thank our sponsors. Thank you for being our race car friends. Thank you so much for all the, the support you guys have given us. Uh, Summit Racing, Molly Motorsports, Driven Racing Oil, Car Chains, Howard's Cams, Performa Bill, Sweet Patina, and Racing Junk. Guys, we can't do it without everybody. Just want to say thanks again. I get all stage up, lined up, and I let off the button, and as soon as I do, the rear end goes kaboom! And... <laughs> What happened? Like this show? Want more? Then head to watchpttv.com, the new 100% free PowerTube TV streaming network. Home of the best classic and new motorsports racing and build shows on the web.